Good evening to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. The evening version now for July 5th, 2018. I was in Raleigh all day uh, attending a college tour at NC State with my daughter and my wife. And at the NC Governor's School, where she has been, my daughter that is, uh, performing in dance. A wonderful opportunity. So I was out of pocket for most of the day in terms of the office. This is the pocket here. But with technology, of course, I've been keeping up with things. And we do have Tropical Storm Barrel out in the main development region of all places. The hostile, much maligned, colder than average, dusty, dry main development region has produced a tropical storm that's very small. And uh, yet it is a tropical storm. It's Barrel. So let's take a look at the very latest. I don't really have anything groundbreaking, earth-shattering news. But I will catch you up on what I have been looking at and just a few things to point out as we see what's happening down the road with this system. First, I want to mention in the Pacific, uh, if this will click for me, come on, Fabio, I guess it's just not going to work for me. That's fine. Um, there it is. Fabio never made it to major hurricane strength. And I'm going to talk about this more in a moment because I think that's important. It was forecast to go to major hurricane intensity and some of the modeling and even I saw some people on Twitter talking about hey this could go to cat 5 and it never even made it to major hurricane intensity alright we'll talk more about why I think that happened in a moment first of all off the east coast this is back up now 40 and 50 percent respectively over the next few days uh, a system between Bermuda and Hatteras or Jacksonville Florida whichever way you want to look at it probably not going to amount to much. Let's just click on it, give you an idea of what it looks like on the satellite representation here. And uh, they mention, even though, well, this is from 2 o'clock, so that's old. You're seeing 30 and 40 there. But they mention, if we go back to the other one, all kinds of technical issues. See, look, it changed back. That's so weird. <laughs> that's fine. Whatever. That's the right one there. Um, a well-defined low-pressure system located about midway between the southeastern United States and Bermuda continues to produce disorganized showers and thunderstorms. However, environmental conditions appear conducive for some development through the end of the week while it moves slowly west-northwest and then northward off the coast of North Carolina. The low could interact with a frontal system on Sunday which would limit any additional development. So my advice, you folks along this area, Watch out for increased rip currents. There already is a moderate threat in most areas. I talk about rain being a big hazard, and it kills people and causes issues. So do rip currents. Last year, GERT, unfortunately, uh, ended the lives of a couple of people as it passed well offshore up here, uh, the second of ten hurricanes in a row, and it didn't even make landfall, and it killed a couple of people with the uh, the high rip current. So watch out for this even if it doesn't develop it'll turn up the seas and create a potential for rip currents so now our attention focusing on barrel and as of the five o'clock advisory there won't be any intermediate advisories because barrel is not threatening land there are no watches and warnings so we're going to get an advisory every six hours the next one being at 11 p.m eastern time but as of five o'clock 50 miles per hour so it's generating minimal ace points right now. Ace points are the accumulated cyclone energy and uh, this will begin to add to that slowly but you know there it is. Uh, the pressure down to 1004 millibars. Now this is all satellite estimated of course there's no recon out there or anything like that but with the high resolution satellite data this is what the hurricane center specialists make the best of and this is what they are estimating so also, notice here, moving west at 16 miles per hour. How many times have I talked about that? I'm going to bring me back on so you can see my emotion here. To me, that is hugely important. It's not moving west at 25 to 30 miles per hour. It's not even moving west at 20. Now, it may eventually do so, but it's not doing it right now. And that tells me that the trade winds down there in the deep tropics, and this thing is sitting just north of 10 north, are not screaming from east to west. When we see these systems just hauling the mail west, and for those of you that have followed tropical storms and hurricanes for 
any number of years you've seen what I'm talking about in the past where those things will just be barreling off no pun intended to the west at a very fast pace 16 miles per hour is pretty much right in the wheelhouse of normal at least that I've seen that from my observations over the last 25 years or so uh, 16 miles per hour is not too fast and that's important because it tells me that the deep tropics the trade winds in early July no less are not screaming from east to west now that can change absolutely but at least for the time being it's not all right so what's the prognosis here well we can look at the map and you can see that over the next several days barrel is forecast to this is the full forecast so it's forecast to dissipate here before reaching the islands because upper level winds are going to probably be real strong as a trough uh, of low pressure or upper level low or something like that cuts off here and generates very strong southwesterly winds and then eventually westerly winds across this area I guess a lot's going to depend on how far north or south this tracks for you folks in the islands and I think they've produced a yep a key messages here if everything will work I just don't maybe it's my neighborhood that the entire neighborhood must be playing Fortnite and that's bogging down my internet <laughs> all right so here it is though uh, two key messages and these are important because of the very small size and this thing's tiny very very small intensity changes up or down could be dramatic so this could fizzle out it could be oh wow it's a hurricane look at that very very small sort of microcane but that's a product of the environment it's kind of protected in that one little area what is it 30 40 miles total I guess something like that maybe a hundred miles of total influence and it's escaping the dry air and it's taking advantage of the marginal sea surface temperatures and the just marginal moist environment I mean this thing's really dancing on the edge of the envelope so to speak razor's edge really uh, and it could go either way so if it encounters 6 to 12 hours and I talked about this earlier you remember I said it only needs 6 to 12 hours and boom it could do something and I thought it would do something within the next 24 hours based on that guidance I showed you earlier from the ship's model and here you go it's, it, it did so within that 24 hour period now this part's important here the impact part we get sort of riled up about oh there's a tropical storm out there and it's in the main development region in early July let's don't lose sight of the fact that people are going to be worried about this in the Antilles here and rightfully so uh, I don't want to say this should be worried you know like worried that this is going to impact them but it's out there and after last season people are going to be anxious that's a better word to use so this part here very important it is expected to dissipate as a tropical cyclone by Monday before reaching the Lesser Antilles there still could be some rain and wind impacts on those islands early next week and it's too soon to know how much wind or rain you know, is it going to be an open trough of low pressure um, a truly just dying tropical system that's drying out I don't know yet none of us know we're gonna have to just wait and see but it's something to keep in mind that there could be uh, some gusty winds squally weather an increase in seas th things like that so pay attention to it as, as it heads your way doubtful that it survives as a tropical cyclone that long but it's made it this far so we never say never looking at the wide shot to put this into perspective there it is right there very small you remember how large Irma was as it plowed across and how large Maria you think about Ike in 2008 uh, and even Katrina the giant hurricanes and barrel down here this tropical storm very 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 small you see also this uh, low pressure area over here uh, this satellite picture this animation doesn't give you a, a good idea of the structure of these systems uh, we're looking at infrared color temperatures representing the higher cloud tops etc so let's zoom in on barrel and this really does give you a good idea here and just to put this into perspective okay this is uh, a, an animation put together by Levi Cowan at Tropical Tidbits and just to get you oriented alright so there's 12 degrees north latitude there's 10 degrees north latitude and typically close to the equator like that and you can just deduce that 11 degrees is in here somewhere I tried with a straight line 
So the distance between the latitude lines are roughly 60 nautical miles, something like that, in the ballpark. So look, the central dense overcast that Beryl has you know, created for itself is about 60 miles across. That's it. The overall influence of the system, and some of it's dry, um, maybe 120. So we could just say 100 to 130 or 40 miles uh, across and north to south, you know, total. Uh, obviously more action on the west side. The bottom line is this is a small storm, and I know there's no land mass on here to put it into a scale perspective, but when you see something only taking up a little bit of latitude and longitude like this, uh, it's remarkable. So it's very small in size, and as you can see, look, there was a big pop right there. The convection's waxing and waning. But overall, the banding features are much more organized with this system. Clearly, it is a tropical storm, and it is remarkable. And the farthest east and south that a named storm has occurred in the MDR this early in the season, Dr. Phil Klotzbach, the awesome scorekeeper of facts such as that, uh, tweeted that earlier today. I'm also a little bit intrigued at this line right here. I mean, more instability, more showers and thunderstorms firing instead of dissipating. You know, everything starts to matter when you want this to dissipate before reaching the islands. We don't need them blasted by anything of any size, honestly. I mean, a little bit of rain is probably okay, but let's drop the gusty winds. Somebody mentioned to me on Facebook uh, talking about, as I was trying to put this into a, a, a brighter perspective that, yeah, you could use the rain in some of those areas, you know, fresh water to fill up the, the water supply. Where does the fresh water come from? It comes from rain across most of these islands, and this might not be such a bad thing, but in areas that were hit by Irma and then Maria and Jose in between, uh, any tropical system with you know people living in tarps and leaky roofs and the slow progress in some areas of recovery any tropical system is going to cause a lot of angst, and so let's let this drop down to just an open wave, bring some rain to refresh those cisterns, etc., and let that be it. That would, that would be all right with me, probably you guys too. So a couple other things to point out uh, as we move along here. Favorable environment now, but that's waiting for it down the road. We'll see. This isn't etched in stone. This isn't a, a forecast doesn't mean that something has to happen. You know, you don't put it into motion and say, well, there's the forecast, and that means it absolutely has to happen. And the forecast for sheer and unfavorable conditions as barrel moves off to the west is supposed to happen in the forecast, but that's not necessarily locked in. It's very probable that it's going to be sheared apart, the guidance indicating as such, but we'll pay attention just to be safe, right? This is interesting, too, a little bit more perspective. There's barrel. And here's the west coast of Africa. And boy, look, more strong impulses over Africa. Uh, it's only early July, and this is really starting to get my attention a little bit more than I thought it would, considering all the negatives that have been talked about for the Atlantic Basin, especially the tropical Atlantic, the main development region. Again, as I mentioned before, you look at this and you say, oh my goodness, parts of the Lesser Antilles are going to just be in trouble. By this point in time, hopefully, it will have degenerated into an open wave. As I mentioned in the key points that we just talked about, it's possible that some of these islands in here could receive some wind and rain impacts. How much so? It's obviously an open book. We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, does that even make sense? It's a, it's a book without an ending, I guess, is the better way to put it. Um, it's an open case. That's the word I was looking for. I was close. But uh, we don't know the, how that book ends, all right? That's my analogy. So let's stay tuned with it together, okay? Now, the modeling for the intensity is amazing to see. Your statistical models really nailed this one for the most part. Maybe it's, you know, luck. Uh, and they're indicating several of these models, Category 1 for the next several days, which is interesting that the ships, the statistical, you know, out to 120 hours still has it as a hurricane, Maybe the shear isn't as bad. We're going to have to look at the, diagnost the diagnostics on that. And let's do that tomorrow. We won't spend all night tonight laboring on this every detail. But that right there, that the ship's model, 
still has it as a hurricane at 120 hours. This is a little concerning. I want to know why. But the dynamical modeling, for the most part, is you know bad news for barrel. Good news for people in the islands. Something to just keep watching. Uh, let's put this back at the beginning, and then we'll start it up, speed it up a little bit. So here's the 12Z GFS. There's barrel showing up in the 850 millibar vorticity field, sort of the structure of the system, very small. You see it moving along right there, south of this nice area of high pressure, the Bermuda High, and then it goes through the islands and it dissipates. Hopefully that's what happens, and that can just bring some rainfall, and that's about it. Now these tropical waves, as they degenerate, which this will probably do, maybe it ends up somewhere over here, we have to watch for it later, just, you know, something to be aware of, or it just completely dries out and sort of what they call shears out. And most of the energy is dissipated over the Caribbean Sea, the graveyard of tropical cyclones early on in the season. Now, let's get rid of uh, this. This is something I want to talk about real quick. All right, let's bring me back. Remember, what you're looking at is from June the 4th. All right, and we were talking about a very cold, relative to average, tropical Atlantic, and a very warm Eastern Pacific in that uh, Pacific meridional mode that uh, exhibits the signs of a very busy East Pacific season. And specifically, what I'm talking about, real quick, right there, nice and warm, and then right over here was very cold. All right, you remember all that. So let's get rid of me. So I can help make this point better. So this area through here is what I want you to keep your eyes on. All through here and then right over through here. All this warmth. This was a month ago. This is today. <laughs> it's like, wow. Look at the Atlantic. I mean, the amount of real estate. I should have drawn more. From June 4th to July 5th, no question that the Atlantic overall has warmed fairly considerably. A lot of that's in the subtropics, admittedly. You know, I'm not going to make stuff up, but yeah, we've gained some heat down here in the main development region and lost some heat content over here, uh, at least along the surface, in the eastern Pacific. Maybe that's why Fabio wasn't able to reach even Cat 3. It failed. And that's interesting, okay? So if you do not have a overactive and overproductive East Pack, then usually the Atlantic Basin jumps in and takes over. We're getting that ready to have, and we already do, a powerful typhoon in the uh, West Pack. Its name is Maria, believe it or not. The World Meteorological Organization didn't change that name. Uh, it got retired from the Atlantic Basin list of names. So yes, there is a Typhoon Maria, probably Super Typhoon as I speak, and is headed towards southern Japan and eventually maybe China uh, as a weakening typhoon. But the West Pack's going to be busy. East Pack's shutting down for a while. After Fabio, that's it. And we shall see. Uh, again, all these little clues. And I might be, ah, what's the word? I don't want to say, because you remember, I'm interested in hurricanes from the perspective of what they do when they impact land and my opportunity that when they do so to put equipment out to study them. So I'm not excited about the prospect of lives being ruined. When I look at these different parameters that seem to be maybe a little bit more favorable, uh, I want to be careful that I'm not reaching too far, that I'm not grasping at something that's not there. But it's hard to ignore the failure of Fabio to even reach Cat 3, the warming of the Atlantic overall. And I'm showing you this, so either the data is just wrong and somebody's making this up in the background, or it's right. And with a uh, barrel sitting out there, I would tend to think that is at least a very small warning shot across the bow that this hurricane season in the Atlantic could be a little bit busier, perhaps. And we're probably way ahead of the, the you know, jumping it a little bit here. But if we didn't have barrel, then you say, yeah, okay, it's just a dud season. But hey, it's July, tropical storm that's trying to become a hurricane, maybe, in its tiny little environment. It definitely has my attention, all right? So we'll look at the overnight models tonight, see what's going on. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon, probably around the 2 o'clock hour was when I usually publish these videos. 
and we'll take a look at the closer ship's diagnostic. Assuming barrel is still there, you never know with these systems. I wake up tomorrow and it's gone. Probably not, though. We shall see. Anyhow, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I am Mark Zutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow afternoon.